get straight away in with that Brentford lineup today. They are still suffering one or two key players injured. And in goal, deputising for Tony Park, still suffering with an Achilles tendon, is John Smelders on loan from Bournemouth. At two, it's Jamie Bates. Three, Roger Stanislaus. Four is Keith Millen, sent off in midweek at Chesterfield. Uh, Terry Evans is back after suspension. He missed the game here last Saturday against Preston. He's back in the number five shirt. Andy Feely comes in at number six today. Seven is Keith Jones, eight Andy Sinton, nine Richard Cadet, now the leading scorer here at Brentford following his two in midweek against Chesterfield. Ten, a welcome return to big striker Gary Blissett. He was also missing last Saturday. And a debut for the number 11 today, Kevin Godfrey, a familiar name to all Lake Orient fans. Kevin Godfrey, released by Orient, is on a non-contract basis. And he comes in today to fill the number 11 shirt because Neil Smiley is still absent with a hamstring. Substitutes are Dean Holdsworth. He's on loan from Watford, but just makes the subs bench today. And the manager himself is at 14, that's Steve Perryman. Now, moving to the Port Vale side in uh, change strip of all yellow today, Mike Stowell is in goal. At two, Simon Mills. At three, Darren Hughes. Four, Ray Walker. Five, Bob Hazel. Six is Alan Webb for Phil Sproson. He's injured, a vital man in midfield for Port Vale. We'll wait to see what effect that has on them this afternoon. Seven record signing Gary Ford. Eight is Robbie Earl. Nine, much travelled centre forward Ron Futcher. Uh, number ten, Darren Beckford. Eleven is David Riley. And the two subs for Port Vale is Kevin Finney at 12. Andy Porter, 14. So we're ready to get underway with this afternoon's referee. That's Mr. M.L. James from Horsham. And it's Port Vale in the first half, kicking off in bright sunshine here, a crisp afternoon for the last Saturday in October. And Brentford have to get back to winning ways, having slipped down the table in recent weeks. And Port Vale also suffering a reverse. Last Saturday, their first away defeat at Blackpool. And on Monday night, the honours even in a six-goal thriller against Sheffield United. And away we go in the first half. Port Vale are playing from left to right. Second in the table at kick-off, Port Vale. Enjoying one of their most successful seasons in many a long year. And an early free kick to Brentford just inside the Port Vale half. It's going to be a testing time for Keeper Stowell in the first half with that sun. And free kick is short, Andy Sinton now into the back of the box. This is Kevin Godfrey. Does well, gets it across. Skins away, they haven't got it away yet. Port Vale is back out again looking for Godfrey. Riley's in the way and uh, return pass finds Mike Stowell. So lively enough opening from Brentford. Some of the sun as it sets here away to my left is going to be a factor for Royal Keeper. Mike Stowell, he is in for Mark Grew. He signed on loan from Everton just a couple of weeks ago. Support Bale also with one or two injury problems of their own, but they've had a flying start to the season. Just two defeats in 12. And there's nine points already between themselves and the home side here today. But Brentford want to put behind them the disappointment of a 2-0 home defeat against Preston here a week ago. And it was only a last-minute equaliser by Richard Cadet. And put Chesterfield on Tuesday, which earned a visa point against second from bottom Chesterfield. That should be no trouble for Smelders. No yellow shirt in sight. The uh, chip is coming in from Kevin Finney. Uh, I'm sorry, Robbie Earl. Sinton is tussling with Simon Mills. Millen ahead of Futcher. Knocked down by Gary Blissett. Can't find Jones. Here's Robbie Earl again on the ball. Jamie Bates in the way. Ball will fall to Gary Blissett. Still Blissett. Blissett going all the way. Goes tumbling on the edge of that box. 
Simon Mills, the culprit. Brentford have a free kick after just two and a half minutes here. And it's in a dangerous position. is happy with the wall. Jones touches the ball to Sinton, he fires over. Just about a yard too high. Show here then. We've lost that ball down behind the terracing. We've mentioned the uh, absence of keeper Tony Parks and Neil Smiley up front. Alan Cochran is another man here at the ground today. But only, I'm afraid, as a spectator, he's on crutches with an ankle injury and a free kick to Port Vale. Brentford running the thin squad here at Griffin Park. As they do, have really suffered cruelly in the last two or three weeks with injuries. Unable to feel the second side. Reorganisation virtually every week. Cross into the near post, that ball out of play, I would have thought. In fact, the referee is happy to let us continue. Jamie Bates now filling the number two shirt. Although he wasn't a first choice at the start of season. And he Simpson's misdirected header. He's picked up by Robbie Earl, played over the top by Earl. The early ball, Millen must get it back to the keeper. Confusion here. And no shouting there and no coordination at all between Millen, number four, and keeper Smelders. This is the kind of thing that happens to defenders with on loan players. An offside flag is raised on the far side. Smelders just uncertain for a second there whether he should have come all the way for that bouncing through ball from Robbie Earl. And then Millen in grave danger of planting a firm header beyond his own keeper. But Brentford scrambled away. And Smelders can calm things down from the back. Brentford looked to build. Stanley Feely getting a nick on the ball. This is Jones, and Feely had continued his run, getting well forward, Andy Feely today. Jones will have to be quick here, Robbie L is a fraction away from nicking that one off the Brentford skipper. Here's Kevin Godfrey, shows good touch. Bob Hazel and Richard Cadet, Cadet is first to react to the loose ball. Oh, and Cadet has taken the ball through Bob Hazel's legs and has won to the applause of the crowd here at Griffin Park, a corner. There's no doubt that record signing cadet really is beginning to reach the peak of his form now into the third month of the season. He's the leading scorer here at the club. His two on Tuesday night have brought him up to seven for the season. And that's one ahead of Andy Sinton. Sinton it is with the corner kick in from the right. Andy Feely looking to play it out to Jamie Bates. Now it reaches Bates. It's a good early ball in from Bates, Port Vale under pressure. Mills keeps the ball in on the far side. Gary Ford, Roger Stanislaus, a bad mistake by the Brentford three. And Port Vale have three men against two here. Robbie Earl lays the ball back to Futcher and Stanislaus makes good his mistake. When Robbie Earl may possibly have gone straight through the middle, put his head down and gone for goal. So, Brentford embarrassed by Stanislaus' error on the halfway line. Live to fight again. Here's Kevin Godfrey. Godfrey's cross is low, hard, dangerous, but no Brentford man is there to just apply the finishing touch. We've had a fine opening seven minutes to this game. Being played in ideal conditions here. The pitch dry and firm, well grassed, of course. Bright sunshine, virtually no wind. And just the beginnings of a wintry nip in the air, but the football so far is enough to warm the heart and keep the home fans entertained. Gary Blissett, 
Just crowded out there, but they could have a corner. Roy Walker, Ray Walker's back pass, eluding Peter Spell. On as even last season in the two encounters. And it's a 1 0 win for the home side on each occasion. Andy Sinton, Brentford's match winner in the corresponding fixture here just over a year ago. Andy Sinton taking the corner now from the left. A variation from Brentford, it's short to Blissett. Now it's long. Cadet jumping, can't reach it. Kevin Godfrey takes it on his chest, dinks the ball in. Just a couple of yards wide of Stowell's right-hand post. Well, Brentford having more of the play in the opening exchanges here. This up. Jamie Bates should cut that one out, he does, but he can't find Kevin Godfrey. This is Riley. Strong challenge by Evans and a fair one to get in ahead of Robbie Earl. But Port Vale with the ball now in midfield and Andy Feely again in with a good challenge. He's enjoying himself today in the midfield role, Andy Feely. The ball will break to Richard Cadet. Now to Kevin Godfrey, early ball into the far side. Mills was aware that Blissett was behind him. And he's happy to play the ball away for his time for yet another Brentford corner. Well, I hesitate to say it because so many times here this season we've seen Brentford start off positively. The better of the two sides. And when the early goal hasn't come, they've then struggled and very often lost the game and lost their way in the second. Blissett with the back header. Ron Futcher, nearly under his own crossbar, is forced to concede another corner. And you're beginning to wonder which of the two sides is at the top of the division. But it's early days yet. We've come up to 14 minutes play in the first half. Still Brentford nil, Port Vale nil. Andy Sinton. Corner from the right. He's looking for Blissett. Bad one from Jones. This will fall for Fritcher. Got the ball skidding away. Ahead of young David Riley. And that Fritcher signed from Bradford City for £35,000 in the close season. And he scored 19 goals in the second last season. And how Port Vale could do with those goals. Because goal scoring was the problem for the Valiants last year when they finished 11th in the third division. 58 they got in the league, but their leading scorer has turned down Beckford, managed just nine. And you don't win promotion when your leading scorer is not getting into double figures. throw with Darren Hughes. He's looking for the head of Futcher. Terry Evans clears beyond the penalty area. Andy Feely is going to have to hold the ball up and does extremely well to release Gary Blissett. Blissett now against Webb. Keith Jones with the cross and Blissett again. The flick header is not too far away from the far post. That's the best Brentford attack to date. Fluent and coordinated from the back, Andy Feely brought the ball forward, intelligently released Gary Blissett, he in turn, Keith Jones on the overlap and then into the box to get the diving header in on goal and not too far wide. But still nil-nil. Now Riley has a chance to test Jamie Bates for pace. Bates just brushes aside the challenge of the little number 11. Drives his clearance against Ron Fritcher. And Terry Evans. Infield, Beckford. Well, perhaps Brentford should have made a better job of getting that one away.
Well, Bedford just having a little trouble clearing their lines. Ford and Mills on the far side. The glance is off a Brentford defender, and that can be a corner. <laughs> corner to Port Vale, then, looking for Beckford. He gets the back header. Robbie Earl acrobatically can't keep the ball down from eight yards and the chance is gone that was Robbie Earl the number eight <laughs> Andy Feely comes in like a tank and Robbie Earl was aware of that challenge, I can tell you. Perfectly fair one. Cadet lays the ball on for Kevin Godfrey, tricky winger. Cross in is indeed one that had the Port Vale defence just at sixes and sevens for a second. For a minute, I thought Peter Stowell was going to come off his line and really gobble the cross up and make it all look a bit easy but suddenly there was hesitation Simon Mills heads away for a corner on the far side Andy Sinton it's a poor one Keith Jones lays the ball back for Roger Stanislaus square to Andy Feely and all the way back to John Smelders as Port Vale begin to prepare their substitution At the moment then, playing with ten men. Simon Mills' path back to the keeper's blocked. And Beckford have plenty of men forward here once again. Can they make their numerical superiority count here? Sinton can't keep the ball in play, but does in fact win a corner. Off the shins of Simon Mills. Still bobbling around there, the lob from Kevin Godfrey just over the bar. But despite all the pressure and all the corners, keeper Mike Stowell is yet to really make a crucial save, but after the opening exchanges, fair to say that Brentford ahead just on points. just nicks the ball away from Terry Evans. Futcher's being hauled back by the shirt. And although the linesman's flagging, the referee decides we'll play on. And Ron Futcher didn't like that one. Free kick to Brentford, Robbie Earl is pushing on Andy Feely. Those two are having a fantastic here this afternoon in the sunshine, I can tell you. Port Vale are still playing with ten men here. What can the eleven of Brentford do against that? Andy Sinton's cross. And it's nodded down by Millen. Bob Hazel was appealing for an offside, but in fact he was the last man back and he was playing all the Brentford men onside. Godfrey's cross is charged down by two yellow shirts. It was Stanislaus here on the halfway line. Roger Stanislaus with the left foot. Tremendous ball back for Kevin Godfrey if he can keep it in. Yes, he can. And Godfrey once again with the cross in early. Stowell needs a second grab at it. So Kevin Godfrey in the action, 
as Ray Walker returns to take up a place in midfield. And the substitution for Port Vale is not needed, so that's good news for Vale. They're back to full strength. Here's Cadet marshalled by Webb. In field to Andy Feely. Jamie Bates drives against the back of David Riley's head. And just behind the pillar here, Brentford getting the last touch on that one, so it's a Port Vale throw. It's Beckford. And he's feeling rather getting caught up with the ball in his feet. But retains possession. Wins a free kick from the challenge of Ray Walker. Andy Feely in the opening half hour here today, having possibly his most influential game of the season. He's obviously enjoying being in the thick of the action in a midfield role. Jamie Bates from the free kick. Terry Evans. Yes, it's a corner to Brentford once again. Brentford finding men from these dead ball situations, certainly from the free kicks, perhaps not quite so crucially from the corner kicks. What, what can they do with this one? Now's the time that manager Perriman will be looking for a goal to go in at half-time with that cushion. Now the centre this time playing the centre rather deeper. Lansman's flagging and Brentford are offside. Now perhaps one last chance for Brentford to press forward in this first half. We do have the stoppage time for the entry to Walker to add on. But Andy Sinton can find no avenue, no way forward. Port Vale are well marshalled at the back. And Andy Feely lets the ball run away from him there. In frustration concedes a free kick and Ron Futcher knows exactly where that one's going. Early free kick wide on the left flank to Riley. Now he's got three Brentford men around him. Still Riley. Uh, and the referee has given the goal kick. Jones and Robbie Earl tussling for the ball. Jamie Bates bangs the ball forward and falls very nicely indeed for Kevin Godfrey. Now can he trick the fullback? Cross is deflected behind for a corner. We played 60 seconds of extra time in the first half, so Brentford will have to get a move on. Countless corners Brentford have had in this first half, as yet they've been unable to make one of them count in terms of goals. That is the final action of the first half then. And even the first 45 minutes here at Griffin Park, which has seen Brentford on top in the early stages. Port Vale threatening occasionally on the break, and certainly the team lying in second place will have to be watched with players like Beckford and Fuchet in the forward line, but Brentford then coming back strongly towards the end of the first half, but no goals here at Griffin Park as the teams leave the field. Here it's half-time, and it's Brentford nil, Port Vale nil. At the start of the second half, Brentford preparing to kick off, playing from right to left in the famous red and white striped shirts. The referee mm -hmm. is just taking note of the substitution as we forecast. There he is in vision. The number 12 for Port Vale is Kevin Finney. And the man gone off at half-time or stayed in the dressing room is Ray Walker. 
And Ray Walker it was who created the best chance for the visitors in the first half. His corner was backheaded by Darren Beckford midway through that period. And Robbie Earl hooking the ball high over the bar. Apart from that, really, it's difficult to remember. A dangerous moment from Port Vale as Brentford pressed forward here, but Gary Blissett is handling the ball. So apart from just rare flashes of danger on the break, once when Futcher was nearly away, and a couple of inspired runs from Gary Ford on the far touchline, Brentford very much in the ascendancy then in that first period. But a half-time scoreline which remained goalless. But um, I'm sure manager Perryman will remind his troops that most of Brentford's goals here this season have come in, in the second half. So there's still everything to play for in this one. Brentford desperately in need of the three points to pull themselves back up the third division. And Port Vale just one point off the top spot. But having suffered defeat last Saturday and two drop points at home to Sheffield United, they are also keen to get back on winning ways today. That surely is a push on cadet by Big Bob Hazel, the Port Vale skipper. Now carrying a bit more weight in the thighs than his days down the road at Loftus Road. But he's still a very, very experienced and very good third division defender, no doubt about that. at the start of the second half. So both teams displaying their ambition quite openly. It's been many a long season since Brentford were last playing football in the second, as indeed it has been for Port Vale. In fact, they only came up from the fourth just a couple of seasons ago. Leisman flagging offside against Brentford. Port Vale were one of the original founding members of the... Division 2, back after the First World War, and their highest ever position in their history, in fact formed over 100 years ago, they finished fifth in the Division 2, but that was way back in the 1930s. But football is proving popular in the Potteries this season because there were over 13,000 on Monday night for the visit of Sheffield United. We haven't got that many in the ground here this afternoon, but I'm sure if Brentford were flying high at the top of the division, those missing thousands would soon be flocking back through the gates here at Griffin Park as well. Now, here's Ron Futcher, his first touch of the second half. That's the substitute, Kevin Finney. Acrobatically kept in by Gary Ford. Futcher just rather let the ball bounce over his head, but in doing so, obstructed Keith Millen. And he rolls it back to the keeper. Gary Blissett. Yes, that's a handball. Against the big defender, Alan Webb. He deputising today for the injured Phil Sproson. And perhaps the first half rather reflecting the fact that both sides are slightly disjointed through injuries from their preferred lineups. Ball breaks off a Port Vale defender for a corner. There's the free kick from all of 35 yards, was driven in by Skipper Jones. So much as we had in the first half, it's Beckford continuing their succession of corners. This is a better one from Andy Sinton. Darren Beckford is back defending. Here's Finney, the sub. And right under the linesman's nose, Andy Sinton just elbowing the Port Vale number 12 away from the ball. And that's a free kick over in the far corner. 
to the team in yellow. They've scored 11 goals before today on their travels. And that's three more than Brentford have scored here in all their home games this season. 